Lesson five, guys, is going to be about transition metals and ionic bonds. So we're going to be understanding the different rules for these variable charged metals. And we're going to be using, again, the crisscross method to determine a faster way of, of writing these symbols down. So rules that involve the transition metals. Remember that transition metals are that whole section 3 through 12. And we can assume that more than one charge is... Oops, sorry. Transition metals are the... Oh, since transition metals can assume more than one charge because they come from the D block, we have to specify which one is involved when we are talking about a formula. So we're going to use Roman numerals. Now, some transition metals are not just in D block. If you look under P block underneath the metalloid staircase where elements like lead are, they have two different charges. If you have more than one charge, not a positive one, I mean like you have like positive one and a positive four, and you have like positive two and like a positive three. If you have multiple charges, that okay. means you're considered a transition metal. So this is what we mean by those Roman numerals. The numbers that you see on the reference table, like vanadium has a plus two, plus three, plus four, and plus five charge that it can assume. When we name these elements, or name these ions rather, in a compound, we have to give them the Roman numerals. We can't just call them all vanadium ions. So vanadium positive 2 would be vanadium 2 with Roman numerals, and so on and so forth. So here's an example. Iron, as we see, has two different charges, iron 2 and iron 3. Iron 2 has a Roman numeral 2, while iron, has a Rome, iron 3 has a Roman numeral of iron 3. They're still being bonded up to oxygen, which only has a negative 2 charge. So just like we did in the previous videos, when you do the crisscross method, you should get for your top example, FeO. Why is it not Fe2O2? Because FeO is your formula unit. And its correct name would be iron 2 oxide. You have to specify what ion of iron you use. In the other example, when you do the crisscross method between positive 3 and negative 2, you get Fe2O3. Again, you have to use the Roman numerals to differentiate the difference between iron 2 and iron 3 oxide. So we are going to so we're going to work on the crisscross method using these transition elements. So here's nickel 3 nitrate. The nickel 3 represents that it is a nickel with a positive 3 charge, and nitrate is as always NO3 with a negative 1 charge. Same rules apply as we talked about in the last video. So the negative one of your nitrate represents you only need one nickel. And the positive three of your nickel says that you need three groups of nitrates, which we show here. So nickel three nitrate using the crisscross method can be written out as NiNO3-3. And again, this is in the lowest whole ratio. Do not forget, as we just said, if you are using formula units, which you're supposed to be doing, make sure your crisscross methods come out to the lowest number. In this example, we see that we have two leads for every four oxygens. They're both even. They can be simplified to a one to two ratio. Make sure you simplify everything. So we want you guys to pause the video right now and using either the crisscross method or trying to figure this out on your own, determine the missing formulas and names and please do all of this in your note packet. Reverse crisscross method is a way for us to figure out the ionic charges that are involved in the formulas. So determine if compound is binary or polyatomic first. Hmm, I see one, two, three, four capital letters. Four capital letters means there's, there's that there are two... Hmm. More than two capital letters mean that there are more than two elements, so this makes it polyatomic. Okay, second thing we have to do is determine the charges of the anion and cation. The cations always go first, right? Yep, cations are first. So what is that AL? AL is aluminum, so it's going to be AL with a positive 3 from the reference tables. And C2H3O2, since it's polyatomic, get it from table E. That's acetate. Acetate can be written two ways, and the regions loves to ask you about acetate. So now we have to name them. Is aluminum, <laughs> is aluminum a transition metal? Does it have more than one charge? 
No, it doesn't. So therefore, do we have to use a Roman numeral for aluminum? No, we don't. All right, so that means we're going to write aluminum. And now we just have to name the anion. Is it binary? Uh, no. All right, so what is C2H3O2? Acetate. Oh, so that formula is just simply called aluminum acetate. Right. Anything else we have to do? Mm, no, I don't think so. Perfect. Let's try another example. Now you have Bi2S5. Oh. All right, so binary or polyatomic? I'm going to say it's binary. Because there's two capital yeah, letters. Yeah, only two capital letters. Yeah. So the cation always goes first, so yeah. let's name that one first. So it's bismuth, but when you look on your periodic table, bismuth can either be a plus, what is that, plus three or a plus five. But if you do the reverse crisscross method, what's the charge of bismuth then? Ah, so if you take the five from the S and go backwards, that means that bismuth is using the positive five charge. Oh, and sulfur, when you look on your periodic table, its only charge is negative two. Oh, reverse crisscross, gotcha. Now, remember guys, the anion will never have a Roman numeral. So the next thing we have to do now is say, what is the charge of our metal? So mm -hmm. I just figured out that bismuth is a positive five, so we have to name it bismuth with the Roman numeral five. Then, since our anion is binary, we have to drop the ending and make it sure it's eyed. So this would be called bismuth five sulfide. And you can't forget the Roman numeral here because there is another bismuth, which means there can be another bismuth sulfide. So right now, again, pausing the video, we want you guys to use the reverse crisscross method to determine these names based off of their chemical formulas. Make sure you guys are using Roman numerals if you're using a transition metal. Good luck.